So first impressions make a difference, is it? Yeah. And um, also the well, let me read it here now, I'm getting lost. Thursday, this coming Thursday, is the start of this Connect program uh, with Christian. I think she did mention that um, last week. So it's starting on Thursday. Uh, from 10 to 11.30 on Thursday. If you need further information, please see Christian. And um, also to mention that, um, and this is to thank everybody who participated. Um, so, the now we get over 7,200 pounds raised. So, that's a massive sum of, uh, of money. And we are so grateful and thankful to all of you. Um, great news, and uh, this is why it, it gets more exciting. Uh, Alison and Mark, where are they? Right up there, they're waving. Uh, I'm happy I can see them and you can't. Um, if you're jealous, come where I am now. Um, they are great parents again, Chobi. Um, so that's their grandson. I'm told he came out as fast as the internet. <laughs> Uh, no issues whatsoever. Am I right, Mark? Exactly that. Um, I don't need to buy this right to but that's it. Um, to help me further have this party day, three come on. Well, let's talk about the officers now. Don't worry, it's nothing weird. Sam, it's your birthday today, isn't it? So we've already said to say happy birthday to Sam and breakfast, but we know how big a part Sam is of our family here. So we'd like to sing happy birthday to, again to Sam, who turns 23 today. Can you believe Sam is 23? Do you remember when Sam was a little baby? Yeah. So uh, let's sing happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Sam. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed with their down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified on the third day, and be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Amen. He is risen. That is what we come and what we celebrate today. More explanation about that video a little bit later on, but for now we're going to sing using Song Book 227. Look, he saints, the sight is glorious, see the man of sorrows now, from the fight return victorious, every knee to him shall bow, crown him, crowns become the victor's brow. Let's stand and sing the four verses straight away.
the resurrection and the life. He is Lord, he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Such simple words, but a massive statement. I'm going to sing these words to it. I'm going to ask Christine if she will just to play the tune through once. So that if we don't know the words, we're just getting to live with it. But if we, we think about these words, and then the second time we'll all join in and sing before we share in prayer together. <laughs>
Thank you for your love, such love, such love that you sent your only son so that we may have life and life in its fullness. We offer these gifts, Lord, as a token of our love for you. Accept them and use them in the furtherance of your kingdom, here on earth and in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving this morning. We're now going to listen to the message that the band have for us, following which uh, children can go out to their own activities. So the contribution from the Salters earlier was a very rich choral kind of work. Uh, but the band piece this morning, you're the choir, okay. Because this is a newly published Easter march, but very much intended as a sing-along called Pardon Forever, as you'll see. So we'll be very much to join in this morning. Um, but there's one point where Alla, the uh, New Year's Day concert from Yellen, you know, with the Rudetsky march, you know, where the conductors turns around to get the people to it very quietly, or a little bit louder. The whole chorus, where well, I need it to really come down, okay. So you must be very careful what's please. If, if anybody does do it wrong, you buy chocolate for everybody for next week, so. <laughs> so this is Pardon for it.
Thank you to the band. I wasn't uh, quite as familiar with that last one as I thought I was, actually. You don't really hear it, hear the tune for quite a long time. Um, I also like the images. I've looked at lots of images of the empty tomb um, over the last few days. And I particularly like the ones um, where the bedclothes are folded. Because I've told my children for many, many years where the, um, the, the grave clothes are folded, that they should fold their pyjamas and make their bed, because even Jesus did that. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I see lots of pictures where they're just strewn across the tomb, and uh, I like the fact that Jesus um, left it. There is a, um, a, an account, I've seen an account recently, where um, in many countries, if you leave your napkin after a meal, um, sort of thrown onto the table or screwed up on the table, then you have finished the meal. But if the napkin is folded, then you're returning and you haven't finished. Jesus has not finished the work. He will return, and we praise him for that today also. We're going to turn to scripture again and read a little more of this account. There are so many things that we can, uh, we can look at as we um, look uh, at the events of Good Friday, but let's that, but also as we look at the events and the accounts of this day also. So from Luke chapter 24, we continue in reading from verse 36. While they were still talking about this, all the things that they had heard and that they had seen, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still, still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you, send to you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Amen. As we read those words, we are an Easter people. We are a Pentecost people. We have our Lord and Saviour in our hearts and in our minds and in our lips. We're going to sing together the words that you've already just sung one chorus of. I don't know whether it's as high as that one, uh, but we're going to sing with all our might this morning. And um, it's some. 229 if you're using a songbook, and this is going to be a time of testimony together. So we're not going to sing through the whole song, we're going to sing the first verse of the chorus, and then somebody be ready today, um, just help me tell us all what God is doing in your life, what it means to you that this day happened, that we worship, we serve a risen saviour. 
who's in our world today. Let's sing a joyful sound, a glorious hour, when Christ, by his almighty power, arose and left the grave. He lives. I know that my redeemer lives. What a, a great acclamation to make this morning. We'll sing the first verse, and then uh, the chorus, and then somebody will be ready to share with us. Do we have a microphone? That's right. I'm sorry. I'm Stuart keeps going to the bathroom. I can take the bread and then I say something else. Do we have a microphone? Just see. Yeah. We do. That we can give to the person. So don't start speaking once you stood up. The microphone will be brought to you, otherwise, people may miss out on that. Let's sing. A joyful sound. Maybe the joyful sound to the Lord. <laughs> So whatever happens from here, but I know that the Lord will go with myself and the family. I know that it's lovely to be in a family and uh, just be here. It's a praise God for them. And praise that God will bring joy and peace and love to uh, their hearts. God bless you. Thank you for your fellowship in the gospel. Amen. And John, we thank God for you, for your influence, for your love, for radiating the light of God into our fellowship and wherever else you go as well. Will we sing those two, or would somebody else like to speak before? Let's sing first the first verse. Two, before. Thank you. 
God always says I'm meant to have the last word. <laughs> we just serve such an amazing God who knows us, who loves us, and the, the celebration of today, knowing that he is risen. But that's not just words, but it's reality within our hearts and lives. And it's in that power that we live. Nothing of ourselves. There are some days, I'm going to be crying like he, he's just done, but there are some days when you feel that you have no power, no strength, and yet, deep within, you know that the power that is there from God is available to us. And I just praise Him for that today. Somebody has, please test. <laughs> Wednesday evenings for some practice. Um, oh. Not always. Um, I get too weak, possibly, possibly. Um, I get far too much stick from the songs. Um, but I also always walk out of the doors when we finished, always being glad of being there. And um, John and Lorna will um, are one of the reasons I am pleased to be and, and, and privileged to be the song sleep. Um, to stand in front of people who obviously believe what they sing. Um, we sang some wonderful words on, on Good Friday, Jesus paid it all. And um, we've been practicing that for, for a while and, and, and the one for this morning as well, I am the resurrection. And you cannot sing words like that without believing. And um, Sometimes the emotion gets too much, and you have to you have to just hold that back. Because really, if you don't, then it sounds really. Um, uh, that's a technical term for the songs, because they know what it is. Um, but I I do believe that we are that we we serve a risen Christ. Um, why do I play in band? Why do I sing in the songs? Why do I come here on Sunday? Um, it's because not just on an Easter Sunday. We say he is risen, but we say he is risen every, every week, don't we? Um, I don't get it right all the time, um, but I believe that uh, we, we have a God that forgives and accepts us as who we are. And um, that's what I'm grateful for this morning, that the, the risen Christ does accept us for who we are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Got the last word of the fruit. <laughs> Uh, I feel humbled by um, John and Lorna's testimonies. Um, it was, uh, I was in my early thirties before I accepted uh, Christ into my life. And I look back and I think of those wasted years, in a way, because they were. Um, and I feel so grateful now that I've uh, allowed it. that time to allow the Lord to come into my life. And, and so I'm in today the full life uh, in His name. And the devil is uh, yeah, just hesitating a bit. Don't hesitate too long. I don't know if this has happened to you, but uh, some of you will have noticed my dilemma this morning. I knew I had to get up from my seat and go and do something. And by the time I got to that door, I forgot totally <laughs> what it was. Anybody else identify? <laughs> and uh, that wasn't an isolated incident. Um, I follow a daily reading book and um, I thought, this is quite unusual. They're looking at the events of Holy Week, a week in advance. And it took me nearly a whole week to realise that actually it wasn't anything to do with the book, it was me. And um, getting my dates totally and utterly confused. 
I am mindful that um, whilst we celebrate um, Christ's death and his resurrection, I think it's time of year, but the reality and the impact and the transformation of those events are 365 day experiences, aren't they? It's not just about um, this time of, of year. And uh, one verse that's um, stayed with me um, is a verse from Ephesians where we read that the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is that same power that's at work in our lives. And I just praise God for um, his power and his presence within my life and this last only oh, six months, oh, it seems a lot longer than that, um, my life dramatically changed and um, came to know a lot of new lovely people here as a result of that. Um, but just to know the presence of God, the reality of God, to know the power of God and to each day celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive and I praise him for that. Amen. There will be somebody else in here who should have spoken this morning because I've sat there and known that I should have spoken. Is there anybody else that wants to share a word before? Um, <laughs> I'm following up from what Harry said because my heart has ached this week, <clears throat> thinking about people who have, who will not celebrate Easter as I celebrate Easter. People in my family who once worshipped here, and I, my heart aches when I think of the number of people who will go out this week and think Easter's just a bad holiday. And so this has been really on my mind this week. And I just want to say what Barry said. If you once worshipped here, or if you've only just started worshipping here, you've never accepted Jesus, just do it. In fact, that's my Facebook page for today. For those that don't know Christ, that you will open their hearts and minds, that they may come to see Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. It's 50 years last year, last Christmas, that I gave my life to Christ. And I'm grateful I did that. And I've had 50 really good years. But I was in my teens when I did it, my late teens, not in my 30s. I've had it had a sense of hand. But I just thought believing in Jesus was enough. And it wasn't. I got moved when I was 16 to Leeds, and I was happy where I was in Bradford. But I saw as I looked back that God had been guiding me, and I came to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. What a glorious day that was. Thank you. And we can see from those gospel accounts, can't we, that Jesus, the wisdom of Christ, came to people just where they needed him to go. To Thomas, the doubter, who wanted proof, Jesus came and gave him proof. To the women in the garden where they had gone to uh, anoint his body, he came just where they needed him. And I would just challenge everyone today, what does life to the full look like for you? Because Jesus came to give us a life. Not just a, a once in a lifetime where I believe and I call myself a Christian, but life to the full. And we don't really know what life to the full is, because it's a growing fullness of uh, acknowledging and worshipping and experiencing the risen Christ for ourselves. <clears throat> what does life to the full look like for you today? Because Jesus came to give you life and life to the full. <coughs> No more we tremble at the grave, for he who died our souls to save will raise our bodies to what a hope we profess in those, those words. He lives, I know that my Redeemer lives. Let's stand 
and we'll sing this final verse together. Perhaps we can sing the chorus a couple of times through. Um, and I'll play that note for next. eternal struggle, it marks the end of the battle with Satan. Because what happens if that after this point is almost irrelevant because the victory has been achieved. But I think, and this is more, more significant I think, it also marks a beginning. A beginning of the, of the new chapter in the life of the disciples and certainly a new beginning in the life of the relationship between God and his people. Because this is the promise of the new covenant that occurs in Jeremiah 31, coming to pass. This is writing his law on our hearts and on our hands. And that's why I used video clip that I did at the start of the meeting this morning. If you didn't recognise it, it's taken from the Franco Zephyrali production, Jesus of Nazareth which is the best part of 50 years old now. And the person who entered the tomb within this, within this dramatization is called Zerah. A, as far as we're aware, a fictional character, but an official of the temple. And after seeing what the empty tomb and the funeral clothes uttered those words, now it begins. It all begins. And in that moment, he recognised that there was something new. There was something significant. He recognised that something, that what happened was going to change everything. Maybe he didn't believe it. We no way of knowing whether any official in the temple hierarchy knew and recognised that. We no way of knowing if they became believers. But for me, this seems to think that, yes, it probably possibly wasn't historically accurate. But it reflects the truth, doesn't it? It reflects the truth. The truth that was proclaimed by Isaiah. When speaking the word of God, the Lord in Isaiah 43, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. See, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And this is the newest of 
new things. And that's pretty much the experience of all the disciples, of the disciples in the outline in all the gospel encounters when they face take face encounter Jesus face to face. The one that Luke shared, the one that Luke shared with us from Luke's gospel, is where he reminds them of what he has said in the past, but also importantly, what is to happen in the future. And it's because they, they will carry his message to the world. It's similar to what we read in John chapter 20, where Jesus tells the disciples that just as he has been sent, so they will be sent. He is sending them. It's similar to what is said in Matthew 28, where he tells the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. This is simply the version that Luke writes. He tells them, but he tells them that before they can do that, they need to wait to be clothed with power from on high. They need to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that also marks a new day of new beginning for the disciples. But I would venture to suggest that this day, this Easter day, marks a new beginning for the world. Yes, we divide history by the date of Jesus' birth. Okay, we've got a few years out perhaps. But we only divide history by the date of his birth because of the events that we have recognised this past week. The significance of the birth of Jesus, while unique, only became apparent because of his death and resurrection. For it is only then that he was openly declared for the only occasion that we find in the Gospels by a disciple to be declared by Thomas, my Lord and my God. But as Nicholas reminded us, as I have said many times, and we'll say it many times again in the time that we are here, we are an Easter people. We are a people of the age of the Spirit. We are part of the group of people that Jesus, that Jesus referred to in his prayer of John 17. Those who will believe in me because of their message when talking about the disciples. That doesn't just mean the first generation of Christians who the disciples witnessed to. That means you and me because we believe because of their message. Of course, that may mean, that may mean we don't think we need a new start. But as John reminded us, even during this week, while we've been thinking about the events of the last week of Jesus' life, there will have been things that we have done that we should not have done. There will be things that we should have done that we have left undone. So that means we need a new start. But that doesn't make us make it gloomy. That shouldn't make us sad. Because it's something that we should be able to rejoice in. It's not said that we have a loving, merciful God who forgives our sins. And we should rejoice in that, particularly on this day of all days. But Easter is every day. In the reading we share from Luke 24, when sending the disciples, Jesus told them to preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So it's not just a freebie. It requires an act, a definite act on our part of repentance and then claiming the Holy Spirit so we don't go down that same road again. But if we truly repent, if we truly do make that turn, then we can rejoice in the forgiveness that is offered. What a day. What a result. What a saving. We're going to sing the chorus that we sang around the start of the meeting. We're going to sing it on the company. He is Lord, 
He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. But we're going to sing also a second verse. We're going to make it personal. He's my Lord. After we sing that, we're going to sing, He's my Lord. He is risen from the dead and he's my Lord. So he is Lord, but then he's my Lord. We'll sing these words too before we share in prayer today. He is Lord. Life to the full means you want to go play the drums for the last song. <laughs> then we will commit that as we're going to stand and sing, Thine is the glory, risen, conquering so, endless is the victory. Thou, O oh, death, hast won. Let's stand. We're going to bring these three verses together. Thank you. 
today and through the rest of this week. And may you keep us safe, Lord, until we meet again. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.